All right. Blueprint. Blueprint does the thing. And by do, by does the thing, I mean Blueprint does all of the thing. It does everything, right? No 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 quarrels there, okay? I think Burnt Joker. I think Burnt Joker is very powerful. The thing that I like about Burnt Joker is <laughs> it gives me something to do. I feel like I feel like I'm going to say that about a lot of things, you know, a lot of the rare jokers is like, it gives me a task. It gives me a thing to do. Um, I like this idea of playing hands and not using your discard so that you save your discard until you get the hand that you want to discard, right? Like you play a few cards so that you can discard a flush. You play a few cards so that you can discard a straight and then use the rest of your discards to draw a second straight. Yeah, rare jokers are generally kind of game defining. Ank says, fair to consider what what type of gameplay you want to get into. Yeah. So like, is burnt joker a fun mini game? And the answer is absolutely. <laughs> right? Um, is obelisk a fun mini game? I think obelisk is not the most fun mini game. I feel like it, okay, like, if you don't like the obelisk, right, if you're, if you don't like the power level, they're like, oh, I think it should be strong, I think it should be buff, like, we could just make the number bigger. You make the number big enough, and it's like, okay, well, the number's big enough, I'm just gonna do it then. <laughs> if the number's big enough, I will do it. I will use the obelisk if you make the number big enough. If you have it scale by 0.5 every hand, if you have it scale by 0.7 every hand, I'll do it. I'm not going to be happy about it though, and for that reason, I'm not a super mega fan of the Obelisk. I think it's strong. I think it's a very strong Joker. I just don't think it's a fun Joker. Pivoting is already kind of complex, and you, you don't need like extra complications on top of that. I think Obelisk... It... Obelisk for me, in my playstyle, I feel like it baits me. It baits me into trying to maximize it. It baits me and try to like be degenerate. <laughs> and then sometimes I get punished. I mean, Burnt Joker obviously does the same thing. It baits me into trying to discard a straight, but <laughs> I feel, uh, Burnt Joker is a little bit more straightforward for me. A little bit more engaging for me. I don't know. I feel like I pivot all the time anyway to where maybe Obelisk is not the biggest deal necessarily. It's just not something that I want to think about. I don't like opening up the thing and looking at my hands and counting them every time. I don't think Stuntman's gonna get the honors from me. I think Stuntman is among the stronger jokers. I think the Stuntman, since it gives you the minus hand size, I think minus hand size is just, you have less action. If you have less hand size, you just have less stuff happening. All right, stop and chat will not allow this. Stop and chat, we've got another $15 for the Stonewall Community Foundation. Speak your piece. Jay says Stuntman more like Stinkman. Stop and chat says Obelisk won't stand for it. All right, get out of my class. <laughs> get, get off campus. Go where I can't see you anymore. Go where I can't hear you anymore. You know, if I, if I saw these two in the lineup, if I had to choose between the two of these, I'll give Stuntman the smash over the Burnt Joker. I think it's a great design. I love the Stuntman emotes. If you got the Belenos Bear Stuntman, Jorg's got it. All right. 
let's let's talk about the less thrilling ones all right okay i'll give you a little inside baseball here a local thunk the man himself the the designer himself developer himself these are his favorite he he likes the x mold hand hands these are his favorite he says he, he pog every time <laughs> So like the thing that I love about these and like the page one jokers is it gives you a direction. It says, hey, do this thing. And if you're new to the game and you don't know what you could be doing, you need something to tell you what you should be doing. And these do that for me. And also the reward, you know, times two for every hand, times two for every flush, that's pretty strong. Times three for every straight, that's super strong. Uh, pairs is times two for every hand. So, you know, these are fine. I think if we're comparing it to other rares, for me personally, they're kind of mid. The question is like, how do they rank amongst each other? It's fun, it's fun to get the combo. It's fun to get all of them. You can line them up two, three, and four in the same hand. Like that's kind of, they, these are, you know, I used to think, I used to say like, these feel like they could be uncommons and they kind of like a waste of a rare slot. But I think like, if you didn't have these rares, I think the rest of the rares would be too complicated. I like having some rares that are simple and these are really simple and that pleases me. That, that satisfies me. Duo trio, maybe the best. Duo is free, free times two. Trio, you don't get the times three early, but you do very consistently get the times three later. I think times two for flushes is not enough payoff for enough for how much work it is. I like order a little bit better. And yeah, maybe family of four, maybe something like this. Yeah, you know, there there are, you know, there's only so many rare jokers and then having some like, you know, just solid, it'll get the job done kind of jokers then makes the other ones feel more special. Family is the worst because if you're playing four of a kind in the first place or if you're playing five of a kind, you don't necessarily need the four X mult. Like you're already winning in that position. I'm with you, Taser. I see you. Yeah. Whereas like times three for either three of a kind or full houses is like right on the edge, right? Like you could be teetering, you could you could need the times three. Yeah. Okay. So a baseball card does this, it gives you X molt, but it gives you more X molt. Baseball is just fun. <laughs> it's just, look at it, just look at him. <laughs> what a fun guy. Baseball, we can smash. Yeah, this guy I would smash. Brainstorm, I would smash too. Okay. Brainstorm or Blueprint? I think Blueprint is stronger. I think Blueprint the art is nicer. I think Brainstorm, I'm gonna put above Blueprint. And the reason is like, Blueprint is too free. Free, you can kind of just place it wherever, you could do anything, whereas like, Brainstorm is more restrictive, you have to think about it harder. And I think that makes it more interesting. I think that makes it better balanced even though most of the time it doesn't matter, like 90% of the time it doesn't matter, but when it does matter, I like that there's a little bit of tension here. I like that Brainstorm is not just always the best. Like sometimes you don't take Brainstorm. There are situations in which Brainstorm is actually not helpful. 
Jay. Jay gave us another $10 for the Stonewall Community Foundation. Blueprint is overpowered. It's too good. <laughs> it's just too good. And for that... Jay says, okay, wait, wait, wait. Hear Jay out. Jay says, brainstorm is a napkin? Hmm. I see. So you don't like, you don't like the coffee stain? You don't like the coffee ring on the napkin? You don't like, you don't like the, the crumpled edges on the napkin here? You like the nice clean straight edges of the blueprint here? You like this nice schematic design here behind the blueprint? I think brainstorm, I, I'm not, I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared to throw it out entirely, but maybe it's just worse. It's just worse blueprint. Jay says if, if someone showed up to graduation looking like that, you wouldn't let them walk. <laughs> That's a hot take. <laughs> Hey, you know, people ought to be able to dress however they want, you know, maybe, probably, within reason, probably. Just don't, don't come in smelling, right? Make sure you've, you've bathed properly, make sure you get the deodorant on. I've, I've been to, you know, I, I play the Magic the Gathering trading card game. I've been to, you know, a local game store. I've been in the trenches. It's, it's not that hard to just clean up a little bit. It's not it's not how you look, it's about the smell. DNA, I'll pass. DNA and I, there's no way we're gonna smash. Here, here's how you can tell. Here, you go, okay, DNA versus baseball. Okay, look at the art, okay. DNA versus blueprint. DNA versus brainstorm, burnt joker. Nah, it just doesn't stand up to all of these other bangers. Just look, look at the beauty of this, this burnt joker here. DNA kind of stinky. DNA cost me one of my hands. DNA adds a card to my deck. Even if it's my best card. <laughs> I, I've said this before. If you want to play four of a kind, you only need four to play four of a kind. Baron? Baron I would smash. Hmm. Ank like would. Ank says, DNA. He would do it if it gave him a, a hung man too. If like you play a card, you get a card, and also it removed a card. If it was like the trading card, like you get rid of a bad card too. See, that's the thing with DNA. It doesn't remove the bad cards. No matter how many kings you add to your deck, it's not going to remove the bad ones. Baron kind of stinky if you don't level up the specific hands, right? Like, Baron is at its best when you level up your three of a kind, your pairs, and your high card, which you're not going to do all the time because it's typically, like, bad to do that. It's also kind of stinky if you don't have any kings, right? Also, it's, you know, if you, if you don't have a lot of kings in your hand, like, you don't just have them in your deck, you actually have to draw them. Ataraxia, another $10 for the Stonewall Community Foundation. Ataraxia, you got the mic. Nick Acorn says, Baron, big sugar daddy. Hmm. If you play your cards right. Hmm. Ank likes Mime over Baron. Because Mime you can do all the time. Baron you can only do some of the time. Unless you like plan for it specifically.
I want to hear what ataraxia has to say. <laughs> ataraxia asks, what's up with Stuntman and Blueprint? Uh, Blueprint's up here. It's the blue one. So here's, here's the thing about the Stuntman, right? Stuntman gives you 250 chips. 250 chips is a lot of chips. So let's think about this for a second. Like, let's say you play a flush. A flush starts out 30 chips. Every Jupiter card gives you 15. So like, how many Jupiter cards does it take for a flush to give you 250 chips? Right, we're talking big, big money, number of uh, Jupiter cards. We're talking like maybe eight Jupiter cards. Is that true? I don't know off the top of my head. Maybe, you know, maybe 10 Jupiter cards. Wait, 10 Jupiter cards is 150. So it's even more than that. We're talking about like 15 Jupiter cards to get 250 chips or you just get the Stuntman and it does it for you. And the Stuntman gives you plus 250 chips to your pairs and your high card and any hand. Also, we got the Baleno Stuntman. Stuntman can smash. We can smash. He's got to keep the helmet on though when we smash. All right, we got Lobster Sucks. Well, Lobster Sucks, get, we've got another 15 for the Stonewall Community Foundation. And another 25 from Grumpy Goddess. Cheerio asks, what's the, what's the tier that's peeking out above? This is just the extras. Um, so the way the, you know, the tier maker works, it was kind of like complicated to remove the cards and I wanted to do just the rares. So, sorry, let me, let me scoot down. All right, hold on. We got, we got Grumpy Goddess on the line. Grumpy Goddess says, overall usefulness baseball maybe not over blueprint in terms of usefulness i think you're right i think baseball is going to be useful in more situations than the stunt man is going to be important stunt man or the the baseball card you kind of need to have a couple uncommons though it's not too hard to have multiple uncommons like there's a lot of really good uncommons Sorry, Lobster Sucks said. Lobster Sucks said, you know, supporting the choices so far. Um, just wanted to see us hit the 500. We've got $35 away from our goal. We're trying to raise at least, I don't know, the goal was just arbitrary. I just made it up. But yeah, maybe we can try to get $500 for the Stonewall Community Foundation. Now we did it. We met the goal. Wait, I didn't get any kind of like notification. We're at 555. Thank you, Grumpy Goddess and Lobster Sucks. You know, we're the final donos there, but also, you know, a lot of donations from uh, Stop and Chat. Tom Bombadilio earlier, very, very opinionated Tom Bombadilio. We did it. Uh, yeah, I don't have, sorry, I don't have the, you know, notifications and stuff like that set up. <laughs> Great work, everyone. I want to go, I want to talk about Invisible Joker. Because I feel like Invisible Joker is like Blueprint, but it can only do one thing. Whereas Blueprint can do everything. Blueprint can do multiple things. Blueprint is my rebate money and then also my second or third king already, right? All right, Jay has Jay has a very important point that he, that Jay would like to bring up here. Uh, Invisible Joker is gambling and you can see through it. It's Blueprint, but it's funnier. Blueprint or Invisible Joker can come up multiple times so you can gamble more times whereas like 
with the blueprint, once you got it, you can't get more. The only way that you get more blueprints is with Invisible Joker. Or Showman, I guess. Invisible Joker, you can copy your polychromes. You can copy your rentals. You can copy your eternals. Whatever it is, you get more of it. You get an exact copy. Kind of like Ankh, but <laughs> less dangerous. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give the Vagabond, I'm gonna give it the, the conditional smash. I think lately I've been kind of cooling down on the Vagabond, not in terms of like power level, but just like for me personally, I don't know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to manage my money and then it's a lot of work to like process all of the tarot cards every round. I just love, you know, the rebate money. I love, you know, what else? We got like lucky cards and stuff like that. Business time money. Vagabond completely changes the gameplay. The question is, is that total, you know, upheaval? Is that total change to the gameplay? Is that a good change? You know, is it too much like the obelisk in kind of like warping your gameplay? In terms of, is it going to give you the W? You know, do the tarot cards equal a win from the Vagabond? The answer is yes, for sure. Vagabond with campfire is a ton of fun. I mean, look at, look at how gorgeous this thing is. <laughs> look at this beautiful, local thunk, you know, I thought I, I thought he outdid himself with the, the shortcut. I thought that's all he had left in the tank. I was like, there's no way you can top the shortcut. And then he, and then he dropped the campfire on us. I don't know where, was anyone else there in the, uh, you know, in the dark ages? During the demo season? Stop and chat says great art. And then that's it. That's all stop and chat said. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, campfires just is really, you can, you can get this so big. <laughs> you know, I, I very consistently get this, you know, above X10. It's one of those where like you don't need it until you need it, and then when you need it, you can go off the charts. Ataraxia, one more time, $10 for the Stonewall Community Foundation. Yeah, Campfire and I, we'll smash. Not like baseball card smash, but you know, we could smash. Ank says, don't, don't overextend yourself though, right? Don't get too full of yourself. You know, you get the big X molt for the boss round and then you still have to go back down, you know, to the, the small blind next round. And so you gotta think ahead. You gotta think about your financial future. You gotta, if, if you need to roll for consumables, if you need to roll down, you gotta plan for that. Adaraxi says Vagabond can get in the bin. Vagabond just, Vagabond just hogs the show, right? Like it, once you get the Vagabond, that's all you're doing. That's all you're doing is, you know, doing whatever the Vagabond wants you to do. Play more hands, get this tarot card, use this other tarot card. And you can't even sell the tarot cards because then he stops giving them to you. So it's like you have to use them. And you know, most of the time it's just a waste. You're just using them to use them. You're just going through the motions. Vagabond can get out of here. Yeah, Vagabond is not trading card. Why would I want random tarot cards when I can just get the best just card removal and money? Trading card, money. Campfire over Brainstorm kind of crazy? I don't know. If you look at the, you know, if you look at the coffee stains here, I think it's, uh, I think it's not too unreasonable. I, brainstorm needs to straighten up the edges and then we can talk then we can smash 
I think if, if Blueprint if Blueprint didn't exist, Brainstorm and I we could smash. Hit the road. I like hit the road more than DNA. <laughs> Expel Sword says hit the mid. I don't think so mid. I don't think so mid with the with the hit the road. <laughs> Mmm. Nighting says it, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad that, you know, the Baron so high and then the Vagabond with nothing gets expelled. You know, we had this this heroic, uh, you know, victory for the Vagabond, you know, coming from humble means, able to graduate with everyone else. I mean, it doesn't matter where you come from. You still got to do your homework. We can get it. All right, hear me out. It's the Wii is it's just the it's just Jimbo, and then scaled down. It's not like less pixels. It's not like a whole new different smaller art. It's just they took the Jimbo and then they scaled it down. They just made it half as tall. Violet Kitty is asking, how do you actually play the Wii? You try to get twos, which you don't necessarily start with a lot of twos, but you can turn aces into twos, which might seem a little bit counterintuitive. You know, aces giving you a lot of chips, but if you have the chips from the Wii, it makes up for, you know, twos being not so big. Yeah, just strength the aces into twos, right? Because you get you get plus eight per two, and it's a permanent plus eight, right? So you play a two, and then plus eight is the same as playing a ten, right? Same as playing a, a face card. Also, here's the thing: your twos, your twos are not going to get debuffed by the boss, except for when they do. But you know, you don't have to worry about the face card bosses if you play the twos. Pareidolia, you get Pareidolia, you get Sock My Buskin on the Wii. I feel, who, who doesn't, I know it's a rare Joker, so it doesn't happen all the time. And I think that's part of the, the benefit, but you know, who doesn't look at this and then smile at least a little bit. When I see, when I see your Wii, it puts a smile on my face. Driver's license is times three. I think driver's license is, I think it's mid. I think, I, I see a lot of driver's license hate. I think, I think, yeah, it doesn't scale. I think people wish that it was something else. People wish that it did more, but it, it gives you a thing to do. It gives you a goal. You get the goal of getting the 16 enhanced cards. And then times three for every hand, right? Is it easier to get 16 enhanced cards or is it easier to get Cavendish? <laughs> right? It's, you do have to do a little bit of work. Wiggler Lesbian says, would rather just re-roll. <laughs> you know, I respect your decision. It's not for everybody. I'll admit, you know, it's, it's not an easy smash for me. It should get times four. John Show says it should be times four. Yeah, you know, in eight antes, Getting 16 enhanced cards might be kind of tough. Actually, actually 16 is kind of tough. Maybe 12 enhanced cards is pretty reasonable. 
Mini quest, kind of fun. Yeah, I like having a little mini quest. All right, ancient Joker. Ancient Joker, I'm not saying that you can't be here. You just can't be in my class. Ancient Joker MVP of the tutorial seed. <laughs> it is pretty it is pretty good on the tutorial seed specifically. Stop and chat, you can't. You can't tattle on me. You can't go tell mouth on me. <laughs> I'm gonna lock you up. Ancient Joker is like Flower Pot, but good. Well, it's definitely better than Flower Pot. How do you tell you tell me? How do you use the Ancient Joker? Don't tell me how you're supposed to. Just tell me how do you personally use the Ancient Joker. I'm willing to. I'm willing to hear you out on this one. Anybody. Yeah. Eternal Paradox, did the Ancient with the Seltzer? Yeah, that's fine. Ghost deck Hex. Onk. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. If you turn it polychrome and make another copy, then instead of doing nothing, it gives you 1.5 molt. Or 1.5x. CC has a very measured response. Just equal distribution of suits. A couple of wild cards. Maybe a whole hand of wild cards. Spell Sword says if you play straights, probably get at least one times 1.5 every round. Okay. Nick Acorn says he doesn't. He doesn't use Ancient Joker. <laughs> oh did we did i forget to update this the stream title oh i should have updated it we're doing the rares now ah uh, that's okay i could do it now Yeah, we're just chatting. <laughs> Hit the road did better than you expected. Hi, hi, Hollywood coat, coaty. I'm gonna just say Hollywood. <laughs> Face cards or low cards? Equal distribution. Equal distribution of suits. Yeah. See, the the issue that I have with uh, the ancient Joker is like. I will already be doing a thing and then at the time that I find the Ancient Joker it tells me to do a thing which is different from what I've already done. And so like most of the time I do want to have all same suits. A lot of the time. Like that's just the default state. And then when I get Ancient Joker it's like oh it's too late to do the Ancient Joker. Zim Zamington, not a fan of the campfire. I mean, yeah. It, what I like about it is it's on demand. It's as good as you need it to be when you need it to be. Also, you know, my personal play style is I get a lot of consumable cards just randomly all the time. You, you know, I, I favor the uh, the tarot card generators, and so if, if I'm getting a lot of consumable cards anyway, most of the time Campfire is like a free times two without having to work for it. Certain bosses can make Ancient Joker feel pretty bad. If you have like the, the debuff bosses, yeah. Alright. How do the legendaries compare to the rares? So, Ricky, Ricky gives you X-Molt. Ricky gives you a quest. 
Ricky gives you a quest, which is, you know, it's just an easier quest than driver's license, right? Ricky gives you more molt than Duo does. Like, Duo is free, but Ricky gives you more molt. Ricky... Alright, between the five of these, let's rank these down downstairs, right? Ricky doesn't care about the face card debuff boss. Face card debuff boss, the thing about True Belay is you get baited, right? It's like, oh, I'm gonna go all in on the face cards. I'm gonna go all in on the kings and queens. And then you get the face card debuff boss and then it's over. <laughs> Yeah, the plant, that's the one. I like Kanio. Kanio also has like a, a quest, right? Like a mini quest, a, a sub quest. Remove face cards. Make face cards for the purpose of removing face cards. Like that's kind of fun. You know, it's, it's a puzzle to solve. But I like, I like that Ricky is just brainless. <laughs> uh, Mike asks, hey, what's going on with the background music? This jazzy Bellatra music. Uh, this is by Dom Palombi. Uh, we'll do a, a shout out. Dom Palombi. Yeah, so he, he does video game music covers. On YouTube he streams also if you want to see him like you know play live put some stuff together live play Bellatro too he does on stream yeah so he's got this like jazzy funk fusion remix of the Bellatro main theme he's got one for the like booster pack background music remix is really cool it's really funky This is it. These are the five. <laughs> I think Ricky's just a little bit easier than Kanio. I think if this is it, then Ricky's up here with baseball card. I think Kanio, I think Adrizzle was the one who said it. Kanio looks kind of distressed. <laughs> Sorry, it went by kind of fast. I don't remember if it was Adrizzle, but. Yeah, Kanio Can is not having a great time, to be honest. Tribolet is like idle, except you don't have to work for it. <laughs> it's just free. Tribolet looks kind of mad. Yeah, maybe Tribolet over Stuntman. Perfect English. Another $15 for the Stonewall Community Foundation. Prepare to speak your piece. I can't condone the percolator. The percolator is a diva. Percolator is like the vagabond. Once you start percolating, that's it. You're percolating. <laughs> Expel sword says. To not call Percolator the best is crazy. <laughs> like if the thing that you like is if the thing that you like is getting the tarot cards, the tarot cards for the deck manipulation, why are you not just percolating death cards? Why are you not just percolating hung man? Percolator is a troublemaker. Percolator is a rule breaker. And for that, I can't give you the same honors as Ricky. Ricky is good, clean, fun that I don't have to think about. I just pick five cards and then ship them. <laughs> I like that Kanio and I, I like that Kanio sends me on a journey of self-discovery. I think Chicklets is not at the same level as the others. I think Chicklets is making this face for a reason.
stop and chat. Gave us another 15 for the Stonewall Community Foundation. Stop and chat says Chicklets is the best legendary. I don't know about the best, but so like Chicklet is definitely bugged is like a thing that's new and well not new but you know that's the thing that we, we gotta acknowledge you know so like if you've seen uh the the Bellatro daily video from yesterday and also today you know we got the the chico hand bug that's not the only bug with the chicklets but that's like a bug the permanent hand size thing is like potentially stronger well long term you know maybe can kind of Hang up here with the percolator. Yeah, we got the Yowie hands. That was the video. That's the thing. I can't, I can't in good conscience, I can't put chicklets any higher than this. So like the, the way that I think about the bosses is like every boss ability makes the game a little bit harder. And if it makes it a little bit harder, you're going to score less points, right? So if you're scoring less points, that's kind of the same as if the scoring requirements was times two. So I think of every boss of, or yeah, every boss kind of divides your score by two. You know, if it messes with your hands, then you play half as many hands, you score half as many points. And then so Chicklets reverses that. Chicklets is a times two. Chicklets is a free times two. Except there's some bosses that don't just give you half your score, some bosses just end you. <laughs> and Chicklets prevents that. The, the reason I can't put Chicklets any higher is because Chicklets just makes the game boring. And I can't, I can't allow that. A Drizzle. $30 for the Stonewall Community Foundation. A Drizzle, don't you come in here, don't you... <laughs> don't you try to defend the Percolator. Oh, A Drizzle says Baseball and Ricky, they're friends. They are friends. They should be together. <laughs>